need such a key player tonight for Michigan. Five out of six from behind the line. You get a feeling that Davidson's going to do anything? They made that well, one little flurry, one rally. Jim, at 15 minute mark, you see Trailer and Baston on the foul line. Trailer's got three fouls. Baston has got, I mean, on the bench. Baston's got four fouls. Michigan goes to the zone for the first time. Double is down in the corner. Donnelly not in the ball game. Who takes the three-point shot? Marshall, two-point shot. Nice job by Davidson, recognizing the 2-3 zone. Hit right in the center of that zone to Marshall. That's his first two of the game, I believe. Indeed. Connellan with Ebong on him. Paul Bauer again, now Armstrong over on Bullock. Bullock doesn't take advantage of the switch. Ward, impossible shot. Hal Bauer having a big night for Davidson. To Ebong, driving, no call. Good job by Conlon. Reed takes the middle. That's a grab foul by Ebong. Now Michigan with a national championship in 1989. Six Final Four appearances, two of them in the 90s. As a matter of fact, this bracket, the South bracket, very loaded with traditional powers. In that first uh, Final Four team, Dave Strack with Tazzy Russell and Bill Button lost to Duke in the semifinals. Back in 1964. What a There's shot Bullock. by Bullock. Three-pointer. Brings the lead back to 14. Inside oh, the E-ball. Armstrong with the assist. No assist in the stats. Beautiful pass by Armstrong through that zone. Reed picks his pocket. We'll drive it in for two. Robbie Reed with 17 to lead the way for Michigan. And it's back to a 16-point advantage. 22nd timeout by the Wildcats. That's only his 15th field goal of the year inside the three-point line. Isn't that something? He gets it on a breakaway steal. You know, the South region, Billy, 22 national championships at all. Of course, UCLA has half that total with 11. Kentucky with six. And I can see why now you thought Duke has the easiest road to the <laughs> to the final four, like you said. Hey, come on. You're burying me. And how about my six seeds? If you, yeah. we, I've got, what, I have two left? Well, you Xavier said the six Clemson seeds could out. be a good final four yeah, well, alone. Well, you know, maybe if it keeps going like it is, they can go play somewhere at a site. <laughs> Here's Michigan again, playing a 2-3 zone defense. They'll get him in the NIT, there's still some time. Well, that's interesting, Florida State asked not to be asked to the NIT, never thinking they're gonna get a bid to the NCAA, now they find themselves in the second round, big shot by Armstrong. Great point shot by Armstrong. And here's a little full court pressure. Ebon with tremendous quickness and athleticism out there. Tough guy to bring it up against in the press. Donnelly fights over that screen on Bullock. Ten on the shot clock. Bullock and a reach in call on the Wildcats. Bullock just destroyed all of the Michigan foul shooting records, beat Cassie Russell, Russell's, Russell's record last year, and now tops his own record again this year. Shot 86% last year, and now over 90. You might remember early in the season, got a little help from Steve Fisher on his shooting form. Could become the all-time leading three-point shooter in the Big Ten, too. He's uh, certainly... Figure next year, he's got the full season. Sean Respert, the all-time leading uh, three-point shooter, the great outside shooter from Michigan State, but Bullock could top him. He's already passed Glenn Rice for the school mark. Glenn Rice started his incredible run, leading his team to a national championship right here in Atlanta. 
One of the great shooting displays ever in NCAA Boy. tournament history. Making threes and falling into the bench. Remember that? So far out. Armstrong, not again. Ebon active. And a foul on Michigan. And there you can see Ebon so active inside and with Trailer and Baston sitting on a bench. He actually has an advantage in there. Conlon's first. 15 foul on Michigan. Ebong will shoot two. Jimmy, you got to give a lot of credit to this Davidson bench in the final of the Southern Conference Championship against Appalachian State. Their bench outscored Appalachian State 39 to 2. No, Ebong contributed 17 out of 39 off the bench. Career high. It's a nice deep team. Davidson, like North Carolina, advancing to the NCAA tournament out of Greensboro Coliseum. They played in the Southern Conference right, the week before. The week before. Mm -hmm. And of course, Greensboro will host the uh, regional next week. East Regional. Bobby Reed with the loose ball. Boy, Ebong is everywhere out there. So quick. see Gerard Ward does not like to put the ball on the floor, particularly against a defender like Ebong. He'd much rather have a standstill shot like I... Oh, there he goes. Wild shot. Two on the shot clock, and Davidson takes it away. Down 14. Armstrong. That's one aspect of Gerard Ward's game that he hasn't really perfected in his four years. Of nice drive by Donnelly. His basket gives him eight. 54-42, Michigan. You know, you feel like Davidson is back into the game until you look up at the clock all the time. They just can't seem to get it down underneath 10 and keep it there. But you feel like there might be one big run in them. Well, you've got to remember something else, too, Jim. During this period of time, they haven't been able to make the run for almost six minutes. Trailer's been on the bench so that Brian Ellaby's been able to save Trailer with those three fouls Davidson and Baston, who are both sitting Davidson over there. So he'll be able to come back in probably at the eight-minute mark, certainly with Robert Trailer. Probably stay for as long as he can. Nice wide, wide move on his part. Till he sees it get down under 10, he's going to keep him over there. Third foul on Marshall. And Mr. Automatic will shoot one more. Ellerby down on one leg, talking about Trailer and Bassett, probably telling them exactly that. As long as we can keep this lead, you want to sit over here by me. There's a timeout on the floor. Greg Gumbel in New York, Michigan, holding a 15-point lead on Davidson with over seven minutes remaining in regulation time. Let's take you around the league and tell you what else is happening. The league? How about the tournament? In Lexington. <laughs> George Washington, the Colonials, had a 10-1 run early in this half to pull to within one, but Oklahoma State withstood it, Clark. And you go back to that period, Greg, they had a chance to take the lead on a fast break, did not convert, then Oklahoma State had a run of their own, and it's pretty much been an 8 to 11 or 12-point game. If George Washington can cut this in half in the next three and a half, four minutes, get it to about five or six, I think the whole texture of the game could change. What has plagued the Colonials is what plagues all coaches and keeps them awake at night, and that's turnovers. Yeah, you can't afford not to get shots because you give the other team an opportunity to go to the other end before you get your defense set, and you take away an offensive opportunity for yourself. Cowboys have scored 19 points off of 12 George Washington turnovers, and they are now under seven minutes to play in the second half. In Oklahoma City, Midwest action, Murray State and Rhode Island, look at the Rams, 70 to 51. They trailed 14 to seven early on in this game. This is shocking to me. I really thought this would be a typical eight, nine game in terms of competitiveness, but Rhode Island has really dominated from about the middle of the first half on, and they've done it because they've not allowed Murray State to get out in transition. They've challenged them on their shots, and they have been a clinic Rhode Island has offensively spacing, penetration, timely three-point shooting. They've been excellent. Yeah, they led by 20 at halftime, and they have proceeded to shoot 71% from the floor in the second half. Shooting percentage, a function of the shots you get. When you get good ones for good shooters, you're going to shoot a high percentage. At the United Center in Chicago, Midwest first-round action, Delaware and Purdue. Boy, this one was over early. It's 77-28 now, and uh, unfortunately for the fight in Blue Hens, there's a lot of time left in the second half. Yeah, George Carl, the coach of the Sonics, said there should be, at least in the NBA, there should be like five gong games where you just throw in the towel when it's over. This would certainly qualify as a potential gong game. 
The Blue Hens have never had a chance. Delaware shooting just 27% from the floor. That's not going to win you very many games during the regular season, let alone in the tournament. Georgia Dome, we return. Davidson on a 7-0 run. Jim Nance, Billy Packer. Bullock with a three-point basket. Up to lead the 15, and back comes Michigan, stealing the ball. But how smart was Robert Trailer to feed that ball back out instead of trying to put up a bad shot inside? Reed too anxious to shoot now. That Bullock three right on the heels of a seven-point Davidson run. And here comes Michigan again. Two straight thefts. Over to Reed. Back over to Conlon, who will bring it out. Much better idea. And Brian Ellaby screaming out there. He wants to use a little clock here. The object is to get into the second round, not to see how big a margin you can get. Right. He bongs to flex it out of bounds. 5-10 remaining. A trailer a little tired on, on those breakouts. He ran the full length of the court on three opportunities for a fast break and never touched the ball. Ali Khan comes back in. You can see Bullock bent over over there. Ward bent over. Ebon reached in. Got a piece of the arm. Ebon won. He came about 10 feet on that pass and almost picked it off. That's his fourth. That would really hurt Davidson on this uh, comeback attempt because he's been the guy to create the defensive intensity. Number 32, Gerard Ward at the line, shooting one and Ward, one. One and one. Ward made all Big Ten tournament. That's kind of a quiet game tonight, however. Got off to a good start in the opening minutes, but quiet ever since. Eight points, all of them in the first half yep. award. Macy O'Baston saddled with four fouls here in the second half. He too has been quiet. All of his points in the first half. Five in all. Look at that. Purdue Delaware score reminds me of Michigan State Penn in the final four in 1979. Al McGuire basically broadcast that second half by himself, just entertained Dick Emmer, said, I've got nothing else to say. Magic Johnson and company just too much. What were you saying? I was just trying to keep Al awake. Our own Greg Kelser put on quite a show there, too. Up right now it's up to the offense for defense he wants as many fresh guys out there he can get nice pass over the top over to Baston and one wow did he hit his jaw on the backboard let's see this play a second Bullock with the bounce pass Maceo goes right on it oh no he got hit by the elbow I thought he hit the bottom corner of the backboard here, but he does get hit by the elbow right in the jaw. Yep, Marshall got him. But Baston's fine, and three-point opportunity rattles out. Still, Michigan by 17 with 4.45 remaining. Boy, as Halbauer had a nice game. Go inside, Baston with the four fouls. Playing a little bit more passive defense than normal. See, he didn't even try to make an attempt. Trailer comes, the ball had hit the backboard, which is okay to get it if it's on the way up. That obviously on the way down. Ebong again causing trouble. Ah! Ebong crashes the boards. And last touch by Michigan. And you can see Bullock is down and hurt. He, he got cracked by Ebong, and I don't know whether he can go right now. He's going to have to come out. Robbie Reed's uh, come in for him. Well, the referees better take their time here. They don't realize, oh, yes, they do. Here comes Bullock out. He really got hit by Ebon. One of those deals where kneecaps hit each other. Donnelly, three-point try. 
We'll see it right here. Bullock has got the lob pass over the top. He's going to turn around and run right into Ebon. Knee on knee. Boy, that hurts. Michigan bench telling us a bruised right shin. And Kozmowski at the line. He's 0 for 3 in this game, 1 and 1. Get a low trajectory there on the, that foul shot. We have Donnelly and Trailer kind of pushing for a position on the inside on the foul shot. Officials again doing a nice job talking to the players as opposed to blowing that whistle. Kozmowski, the freshman of the year in the Southern Conference last year from the Dallas, Texas suburb of Bedford. His father, Lynn, played at Tennessee and was in the NBA for a few seasons. One of two, Conlon clears for Michigan. Clock becomes a factor now. Nice pass. No one pass, and Ward finishes. How about that, Robert Trailer playing the point man on the fast break. And rebounds at the other end. Ward was off and running. Under four to go. Davidson got within nine in the second half, but never able to get any closer. Jim, we always take a look at conferences that seem to be doing well. The Big Ten has a chance to stay undefeated here so far, right? Well, they've got Illinois, Indiana's one, Michigan State's one. Purdue obviously is going to win. Uh, and Michigan in good position. Different story from the last two years, that's for sure. We'll be right back. I think we can go ahead and put Michigan in that second round, Billy. And there's an opportunity here with this Wolverine basketball team and the athletic program at, at Michigan to do something that's never happened before. Yeah, I know what that is. Win a national championship that's in right. both football and basketball in the same year. Michigan is one of the, what, six or so teams? Now, maybe a little bit more than that that have won both the football and national championship in basketball as well. Eight in all have at some time, but never in the same right. academic year. But the Big Ten has Wisconsin, Ohio State, Michigan. Uh, the Pac-10, I think, has Stanford, UCLA. What about and this? Who, who's the other team they have? Uh, Washington? Who, who do they have? Oh, Stanford's one of them. Let me ask you about this basketball team in Michigan. And what chances you give them of going that far? Oh, I, I think they definitely could. I mean, when you take a look at what the Big Ten has done in the first round, the NCAA tournament, they don't have a loss yet. And this Michigan team was able to win their conference tournament. Oh, what a play! Look at this trailer, able to gain control of it. He's the most graceful <laughs> player on the team. Hey, and even even Gerard Ward looks at him and starts laughing. And how does the big guy do stuff like this? Watch this ball. Hits him. Bad pass, he keeps it alive, and then goes in the air and makes the dish. <laughs> Was I out of line when I said Charles Barkley? Not at all. I don't think so either. I don't think so either. And I'll tell you what, I've watched him shoot around. He can step out and make the, uh, the, the jumper away from the basket as well. E. Bong has fouled out with and, nine points. And here's the other thing about Robert Trailer. He's the first to go over and congratulate E. Bong for a fine game. He's a, he's a good sport as well as being a fine player. E. Bong showed us a lot here tonight. The kind of performance that earned him the Southern Conference Tournament MVP two weeks ago. Start thinking about some of the possibilities down the line. And with Michigan and Duke in the same region, you know, we were there to see Michigan upset Duke well, they've back got, in December. They've got a nice string going against Duke right now, if it ever turned out to be that way. Three in a row they've won. Duke had that long string against them for a while, finally broken. Nice shot there by Donnelly. And 
a timeout called by Davidson. And Davidson's going to use everything they can now to stop this clock. But every time they got within striking distance, it seemed that Michigan had an answer. Bob McCallop in his ninth year at Davidson. He was formerly a high school coach out on Long Island where he had some star players in high school, including Bill Wennington and Matt Doherty, one on the North Carolina, played on the 82 championship team. Got to tell a cute story about that I didn't realize, but when Lefty Giselle decided to leave Davidson in 69, they presented him with a Ford Thunderbird. And uh, about two days oh. later, they, they presented him the car, and I didn't realize they presented it on the court. McKillop was playing for East Carolina at the time. He remembers them driving the car out on the court. The problem was, two days later, Lefty took the job at Maryland, and he took the car with him. The Davidson people wanted the car back. Lefty said, no, you paid me off for what I did in the past, not what I was going to do for the future. And I understand that still Lefty has still, the, has, the still has the car. His daughter drives it. <laughs> Can you imagine that? His car for almost 30 years. And the left-hander coaching now right here in Atlanta, one game away from his 700th victory. He's got 699 now. Robbie Reed. Ball touches Donnelly on the way out. Well, the stat of the game, CBS Sportsline stat of the game, field goal percentage. Michigan's been riding way over 50%. For the night, one time, in fact, up in the 60s. Find out more on cbs.sportsline.com. All this tournament, tournament information. Opposite Smith not making himself available. He just stood and looked instead of getting himself in a passing lane. But he hit the shot anyway. Quick release. Smith got some valuable minutes in this ball game in the first half. Brian Ellaby doing a good job recognizing what Davidson was going to try to do against his team. Went to his substitutes early and they paid off. Armstrong misfires. Foul inside. Balled against Davidson. Kosmowski in the foul. Bastion goes to the line. The Southern Conference representative a year ago was Chattanooga. Chattanooga made it all the way to the Sweet 16. That's his third. Ford was eliminated by Providence at the what was then the Southeast Regional in Birmingham. No longer a Southeast in existence in the tournament. You know, it's South now. When you think of UT Chattanooga, probably Bob McKillop's uh, most disappointing moment prior to tonight was back in 96. His team was 25 and 5. They were 14 and 0 in the league and got beat in the semifinals of their conference tournament by UT Chattanooga. And there goes Robert Trailer down. And I said at the top of the show that he would be the story of this game. And you're not going to beat Michigan unless you solve a way to stop him. Double double for Trailer tonight. 14 points, 11 rebounds, and uh, a lot of kisses being directed his way by his grandmother, Jesse May Carter. In fact, I counted more than 10. I'll make it a triple-double for <laughs> trailer tonight. Well, Friday the 13th was lucky for him in every respect, then, huh? Not for a lot of teams in the afternoon. But certainly for Michigan tonight. Well, for every loser, there's somebody that wins, Jim, so I guess it's about half and half. Al Bauer has had a fine game. Good job by Smith staying with him. And a violation against Davidson traveling. Young man has given everything tonight. Terrific work on the defensive end of the floor. Hit some big shots early on. Back in 1989, Michigan tracked to the national championship started in Atlanta as a number three seed. They had an interim coach that year, Steve Fisher. Well, remember when uh, Bill Frieder stepped down, it was only the difference between he and Brian Ellaby was that was only two days before the tournament started. At least Brian Ellaby's had a chance to work with this club throughout the course of the whole season. Wouldn't it be interesting if Bill Frieder left to go to Arizona State and a guy like Steve Fisher would end up at Arizona State with Bill Frieder stepping down there? That's been discussed. Yeah, I've, heard the, I've heard the name a time or two. Ron Oliver at the line for Michigan. He'll shoot two. 
Well, college basketball can use Steve Fisher back in the game. He's been a class individual and a fine coach. Had, what, a 20-6 and six record in NCAA tournament play? I would imagine... One of the winningest percentages yep. in history. I imagine a, another school could use his services. Three teams to the Final Four. One national title. One minute. Tough shot. Ah! Ball battled, battered around. Davidson will get another try at it. Armstrong with a three. And a timeout called by the Wildcats. Well, sometimes you wonder why a, a, a coach always tries to do everything he can for his team to win a game, but with 43 seconds to go, there certainly is no opportunity here. You can go ahead and put it in pen, put it in ink. Michigan on to the second round. We'll be right back. Jesse May Carter hail to the victors, just waiting for the final margin, final score. 43 seconds remain, 16-point lead, and Oliver will head back for two free throws. The Chevrolet players of the game are Ben Ebong for Davidson, 9 points, 8 rebounds, and Robbie Reed, who was uh, really lighting it up from outside tonight. He was a key, Jim, in the first half, hitting those three-point shots when the game was uh, played at a very frenetic pace. Kind of gave Michigan that working margin that uh, Davidson has never been able to recover from. Armstrong, who's had a fine basketball game. The backup uh, point guard. 13 points off the bench. If you're Michigan, you want no foul here. Marshall, three-point shot. And ball batted around. Michigan has the player up ahead. It's Smith. Gaslin. Gaslin, who uh, gave good play off the bench tonight. Running the floor very well. He's going to be a fine player in that Michigan uniform in time. Al Bauer. There he is with a block. This one is over. Final five seconds. Oliver shoots the three. Michigan wins it 80 to 61. And we'll take on the winner of the next game here, UCLA against Miami. Right now, let's go back to New York, Greg Gumbel. Take it away. All right, Jim Nance, 80 to 61. The Wolverines, number three seed in the South, advance. Speaking of the South, let's take you to Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. More first round action taking place between Oklahoma State and George Washington. Oklahoma State putting the finishing touches on a first-round victory over George Washington. Eddie Sutton turning 62 yesterday. The selection committee sending him back to Kentucky where some of his more forgettable moments in college basketball occurred, but he's truly resurrected Oklahoma State and now has a chance to move on and meet one of the top teams in the country, potentially in round number two. Not too many Eddie Suttons around anymore. Eddie Suttons are like Bobby Knight, a lot like uh, Don Haskins, a lot like um, Norman Norman uh, out of Missouri. Their days are almost over. Oklahoma State will advance and wait for the winner of Duke and Radford. Syracuse and New Mexico. So this one of the rare regions where potentially the higher seeds could hold serve. Shante Rogers, a Chevrolet player of the game for the Colonials. And Adrian Peterson, 23 points for him. Dante takes the seat. His career moves forward along with Mike King in the backcourt, running mate from Baltimore. And Oklahoma State, the eighth seed, survives to advance to Sunday's second round. For Al McGuire and Trent James, Tim Brando saying so long from Lexington, Kentucky. Let's take you back to our New York studios and Brett Gumbel. Brett? So Eddie Sutton celebrates his 62nd birthday one day later with a 74-59 win over George Washington. Now we're going to take you from Lexington in the south to Oklahoma City in the Midwest, Murray State and Rhode Island. The Rams have been in charge all the way in this game. Ted Robinson and Rolando Blackman in the final minute of the game. In Oklahoma City, Rhode Island and White dribbling out the final minute here of what has been a dominant performance for the Rams. Rhode Island took this game over midway through the first half 
and they have completely smothered Murray State, a 29-win team out of the Ohio Valley Conference. And in this game, which features the incredible story of two coaches that are so close, they actually spent last night together, the night before the game. Jim Herrick and Mark Gottfried got together. The whole Herrick family is here in Oklahoma City. They're so close with Mark Gottfried and his family. But the game has belonged to Jim Herrick in Rhode Island. Murray State has been the high-scoring team this year, but it's Rhode Island that got to 97. And Jim Herrick's return to the NCAA tournament has been successful. And the two coaches that had an emotional handshake before the game now share an emotional hug. And it's Larry Farmer, the assistant coach to Jim Herrick. The same with Mark Gottfried. There's so much great feeling there. And as disappointed as it is for Murray State, they have now, now that the game's over, they've become the biggest Rhode Island fans around. What they have. Everyone is very, very close, and it shows good teamwork. Our Chevrolet players of the game, Isaac Spencer from Murray State, had a double-double, and Tyson Wheeler, the floor general, was simply superb tonight for Rhode Island. So Rhode Island has advanced. Kansas and Prairie View are up next, and the winner meets Rhode Island in Game 2 here in Oklahoma City on Sunday. Stay with us. Greg Gumbel will be with you in New York in just a moment. Rhode Island, 97. Murray State, 74 in Oklahoma City. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA basketball championship. It's to Jenkins, to Drew for the win! Good! Oh, he did it! Oh. Drew did it! Balfo has won the game! A miracle! That's what happened at Oklahoma City earlier today as Valparaiso knocked off Ole Miss at the buzzer, 70-69. to 69, And uh, the uh, Valparaiso team advances. Here's what's happening tonight, second half of our doubleheader. Many of you will see number one seed Duke take on Radford, the champions of the Big South. Number six UCLA will tip at 10.06. Top seed Kansas in the Midwest tipping at 10.07 against Prairie View A&M. And St. John's in Detroit will tip just before 10 o'clock. We'll be here to bring all of that to you and we'll come back to tell you all about what's happened today in just a moment. Very nice, very nice. Tip times for the last round of games this evening. Detroit and St. John's will tip in Chicago at 9.59 Eastern Time. In Atlanta, Miami and UCLA will go at 10.04. In Lexington, Duke and Radford will go at 10.06. And Prairie View, A&M and Kansas in Oklahoma City a minute later at 10.07. And of all these games, guys, you think that Detroit-St. John's may be the one that holds the key as far as buzzer beaters and tight matches go tonight? When you look at that matchup, what I think about is going down down to the park on a Saturday. Detroit guys against New York guys. It could take on a playground type thing. Okay, I just want to get the coach right here. Early on, he went way out on a limb, and he said, don't worry about Duke, and don't worry about Kansas, because they're going to advance, and we just want to make sure you haven't changed your mind. But these two teams can win the national championship, so it'll be interesting to watch Kansas and Duke tonight. How about UCLA and Miami? Well, Miami is a scrappy team. They've had some guys out of action the last few weeks, haven't played as well as they did early in the season, but they'll come and fight, and they'll make it a street fight in terms of how they get after it tonight, I think. All right, let's reiterate. Some of you will be seeing Miami and UCLA, Radford against Duke, and Prairie View A&M against Kansas, but we're going to start you first with the action in the first round of the Midwest at the United Center in Chicago, Illinois, where 10th seed Detroit will take on number 7 seed St. John's University, and then we will get you to the respective tips of your game as they come up. All of that coming up after this word from your local station.